and welcome to Business Daily. I'm Ijeon in Seoul. Before we get started, let's first get a glimpse of today's highlights. Despite lingering uncertainties, more Koreans were optimistic about the economy this month as the overall consumer sentiment improved slightly from a month earlier. Korea's economy grows less than 1% for a third straight quarter in the April to June period, raising concerns that it might be headed for prolonged low growth. We'll sit down with an expert to talk about this. Korean consumers' outlook for the economy went from negative to positive this month on the back of eased concerns over Brexit. But the top central banker cautions against too much optimism, noting that recovery momentum still remains weak. Our Kim min starts us off. Korea's consumer sentiment has improved slightly, touching the highest point in three months. The Bank of Korea says the consumer sentiment index this month came in at 101, up two points from June. A reading above 100 means optimism outweighs pessimism. The monthly index reflects consumers' outlook on the economy, their living conditions and future spending plans. The uptick in July is seen as reflecting easing concerns about the possible fallout from Brexit. The reading came in below 100 for two months due to the government's ongoing corporate restructuring drive, which triggered fears of massive layoffs in the country's shipping and shipbuilding industries. Despite this mild improvement in sentiment, Bank of Korea Governor Lee Joo-yeol says recovery in the domestic economy remains feeble, with exports still slow and structural issues such as an aging population and rising household debt very much present. Speaking at a conference held at the National Assembly, the country's top central banker said Korea has enough fiscal strength to cope with the slowing economy and weak job market. His comments are likely a message directed at the National Assembly to push for the swift passage of a supplementary budget bill worth roughly 9.7 billion U.S. dollars, drawn up to bolster job creation and cushion the impact of corporate restructuring. He added that the country's monetary and fiscal policies need to be coupled with structural reforms to address the problems of low growth and a decline in growth potential. Kim min Business Daily. Korea's Prime Minister today explained the details of the government's supplementary budget proposal that was submitted to the National Assembly just yesterday, saying that the extra funds are critical to getting the economy moving again. Our Tim young gil has more. In a parliamentary address on Wednesday, Prime Minister Hwang kyo emphasized that the budget supplement will help generate more jobs, revitalize regional economies, and stabilize the livelihoods of people in the low-income bracket. The government and the ruling's Henry Party are hoping to pass the 9.6 billion U.S. dollar budget bill next month, so the funds can be allocated in September, before the start of the fourth quarter. The government says the spending package is primarily aimed at mitigating the fallout from its drive to restructure ailing shipbuilding companies. The opposition parties, which have both agreed on the need for the extra funds, now say they may need more time to thoroughly review the proposal. The main opposition Minju Party of Korea said there is no need to rush the deliberations, as it will follow through on its agreement to pass it as promised. The minor opposition People's Party echoed the view, adding that it wants to look deeper into the fragile finances of state-run banks before providing them with support. Prime Minister Hwang has called on all ministries to make the necessary preparations so that the budget can be rolled out as soon as the parliament approves the plan. Kim young Business Daily. A rate freeze is widely expected as the U.S. Federal Reserve starts its two-day policy meeting on Tuesday. The forecast comes as there are still lingering uncertainties over the U.K.'s decision last month to leave the European Union and as policymakers look for more evidence of a rise in inflation toward the Fed's 2 percent goal. The central bank currently holds the rate at between 0.25 to half a percent. But the market is speculating a rate hike could come as early as September, with more economic data potentially taming Brexit jitters as seen recently after better retail sales and employment figures in the UK were released for June. Some projects a rate move later in December, with many expecting more market volatility around November when the US presidential election is set to take place.
Just yesterday, we reported on how Korea's economy picked up in the second quarter from the previous three months, helped by a boost in consumption and housing construction. But on a quarterly basis, it still grew below 1% for a third straight quarter. And to tell us more about this, Professor Shin Sehdon of Sungmyung Women's University joins us in the studio today. Thanks for joining us. Pleasure. All right, so looking at this latest data, do you think Korea is headed for a prolonged economic slowdown? Well, last quarter, it was uh, 7 tenths of 1% and 2.7% as of yet last year. Mm -hmm. So I think the, the current pace of economic growth is very similar to 2015. Okay. So um, if we say this is a prolonged economic slowdown, we happen here almost three years. So exactly, I mean, uh, current economic growth is kind of uh, maintaining uh, the, the average pace of economic growth for the last three years. Mm. Now, how is Korea's economic growth compared to other countries then? Well, you know, well, we can't compare just one quarter over the different country, but if right. we look at the number for 2015, which is 2.6% for Korea, that's about the same as the United States, 2.4%. Okay. And about, uh, you know, so, uh, but, but other countries like Japan, 0.5%, Taiwan, 0.7%, uh, European Union, 1.76%. Uh, so uh, Korea has been relatively doing pretty well compared to other countries like uh, Japan or European Union. Mm. Now, experts did point out to Korea's rapidly aging society as well as its chronically low birth rate as some of the biggest problems that could drag down Korea's economic growth as it could lead to labor shortages. What are your thoughts on this? Well, that may be true in the very long time perspective. Mm. But you know, if you look at the growth number from 2010 until 2011, uh, economic growth has been almost four or five percent, mm. and at the time, you know, even you know the the birth rate and the aging society has been the trouble for the country. So, uh, aging society and the uh, low birth rate has been chronic problem for Korea for a long time. But current slowdown economic you know growth has little, I think, to do with the, uh, with the aging society and the low birth rate. Mm, now, moving on to another thing here. An, earlier this month, the Bank of Korea actually trimmed its growth forecast to 2.7% for mm -hmm. this year. So what kind of performance do we need to see in the latter half of this year to, I guess, match to that forecast? Well, uh, for the first two quarter, uh, first half of this year, uh, GDP growth rate is 3%. Mm. So in order to achieve 2 0.7% for the year, we need to have 2.4% growth in the second half. So it sounds a little easy, you know, 2.4%. But if you look at the year 2015 second half, the economy was growing almost 1% oh. per quarter. So okay. if you compare to that, I think even 2.4% growth in the latter part of this year would be pretty much challenging for Bank of Korea and the government. Mm. Now, another thing to note is Korea's real gross domestic income, or GDI, which dropped at 0.4%. And this was actually the first time that it saw a quarter-on-quarter -quarter decline in five mm -hmm. years. So what can we make out of this? Well, you know, that has been, I mean, the uh, GDI or GNI has been dropping from almost a 7% growth in 2012-13 you know, and mm -hmm. continuously falling to 4.4% uh, this quarter. So the main reason, I think, is, uh, is because of terms of trade effect. Terms okay. of trade means that the, the price of exports from Korea become very cheap mm -hmm. and the price of import from other country become very expensive. So, uh, you know, relatively speaking, we are selling cheap mm. and have to buy a lot more expensive. That is the main meaning of in terms of trade effect. And the, the reason for GDI has been falling very dramatically, mm -hmm. I think, is mostly because of terms of trade effect. Now, talking about exports, Korean exports have actually been falling for 18 months straight. But some are actually hopeful that this could be turned around in the latter half of this year. And what are your thoughts on this kind of outlook? And also, what kind of issues or events should we keep a close eye on from here on out that could have a large impact on the Korean economy? Well, only this year, you know, export was growing negative, you know, double-digit uh, percentage, but now it's shrinked. 
uh, uh, shrunk down to 2% uh, a month of June. So definitely the negative growth of export has been improving for the first half, but mm -hmm. it's going to be very difficult to expect the growth of export will turn to positive in the second half. So I think uh, uh, the export has been and will be also a problem in, in the coming month and uh, the government has to uh, produce a lot of creative you know, policies to mm. kind of uh, stimulate export. Now what other events or issues should we keep a close eye then that could I guess impact Korea's economic growth in the latter half? Well first they have you know the government in order to stimulate the consumption they have uh, temporarily exempted the special consumption tax and uh, we uh, knowing that you know, there's no more uh, tax e exemption for the special consumption. So I think it's going to be very difficult to expect the high growth in domestic demand and consumption. And also plant investment has been showing very poor mm. performances. So investment and uh, private consumption should be the two critical area that government has to focus in, in implementing policies. All right. Thank you so much for your insight You're today. welcome. Another major export item is under threat, smartphones. The offensive by Chinese smartphone makers is only becoming more intense as their collective second quarter sales exceeded that of heavyweight Samsung and Apple combined. Our Eunice Kim has this report. It was a strong second quarter for Chinese smartphone makers. They sold a combined 139 million units in the April through June period, beating out top players Samsung and Apple by a whopping 14 million units. It's not the first time to accomplish the feat either. It's in fact the second back-to-back -back quarter for the likes of Huawei, Xiaomi and Oppo to surpass the global smartphone giants in sales. Korea's smartphone king, meanwhile, is seeing its lead in the worldwide marketplace wane. Samsung Electronics laid claim to less than a quarter of the global market share in Q2 at 24.5 percent, dropping 3.5 percentage points from the quarter before. This is being attributed to a slowdown in sales of the Galaxy S7, which was released on March 11th to enthusiastic reviews. Meanwhile, China's Huawei is keeping a firm hold on its third-place post after Samsung and Apple, having sold 29 million units in the second quarter. But the real rising star is a little-known manufacturer called Oppo. The Guangdong-based company has beat Huawei and Xiaomi in winning over Chinese consumers, taking on 23 percent of the world's leading smartphone market. That's an impressive growth from its less than 2% market share just two years ago. As Chinese manufacturers compete for a bigger piece of the pie, market watchers here at home are looking forward to Samsung Electronics' release of its Galaxy Note 7 in August, followed by new deliveries from LG and Apple. Eunice Kim, Business Daily. A U.S. judge has granted preliminary approval to a 15 billion U.S. dollar settlement for Volkswagen's emissions cheating scandal. U.S. District Court Judge Charles Breyer ruled Tuesday on the deal that would settle consumer lawsuits from American drivers seeking compensation for diesel-powered vehicles rigged to cheat local emissions tests. The terms call for Volkswagen to spend up to 10 billion U.S. dollars to buy back or repair about 475,000 affected Volkswagen and Audi vehicles with two-liter diesel engines. Car owners will also be paid at least $5,100 in additional compensation. The judge is expected to make a final decision on the settlement in October. The combined number of international and domestic air travelers flying in and out of Korea rose to a record high of nearly 50 million during the first half of this year. According to the Transport Ministry, this is a 14.5 percent jump from the same period last year. The increase seen in overseas travelers was slightly higher than that of domestic passengers, climbing over 15 percent to 35 million people. A stronger Korean won and a lift on fuel surcharges for international flights are believed to have pushed up the number of Koreans opting to travel outside of the country. 
The rebounding Japanese yen and earthquakes that hit Japan earlier this year also nudged more Asian travelers toward Korea. Experts predict the number of passengers will grow well into the second half of the year, with the summer vacation season expected to continue through the end of August. And that wraps it up for today. Thanks for watching and we'll be back tomorrow with more business news that matters to you. Until then, goodbye.